Hanging something on the walls of our locker room is, is very meaningful to us. We really have tried to, to approach it in a way where things have to have real meaning and, and to the values of our program. So interestingly, we don't have anything in here recognizing any of our All-Americans. We don't have anything in here recognizing any of the accomplishments of our team going to a championship game or doing anything else. What we have are things that recognize the values that we hold sacred. So, got another thing for the for the team room. Sweet. Well, it's a great patch. We're going to hang the patch in there just because it's another reminder of, of the things that, that we think are important, you know, for us to, to appreciate and value the sacrifices that other people make that allow us the privileges that we have. It's part of the values of Notre Dame, so, you know, it's something we're going to make sure is part of our program. All right. Very good, very good. We'll make Thank you. Up five to four with 11.5 left to go in regulation. Tory Barnes scores. The Pride have tied it up with 3.9 left to go. What a turn of events! So they score with 3.9 seconds to go, and we're all kind of in shock. And we are heading to overtime. Unbelievable. At that point, we just wanted to come out of the end of game break uh, going into overtime with the sense that it's all good. It's just we're one play away and we're the ones that have to make that next play. Sean Rogers, score! Yeah! Notre Dame escapes with a 6-5 win. After the game, I was walking back, and then I see probably 50 little kids with ball in hand and marker, just dying for autographs and just high fives. And walking off the field was definitely one of the, the highlights of my lacrosse career and really put things into perspective when I got to see my family to my right and young admirers to my left. The fact that they were so excited to, to meet the, the kid who grew up a few miles away who scored the game-winning goal, um, that was really exciting. And, Something I obviously could relate to, being that I was that little kid. Right now, we're three and one, having played four top 20 teams. So you, you come out of the next three, and you're six and one, and you're in a great position. You lose three, and your season narrows down to we have to win our league. This is a, a pivotal week for us, you know, and a pivotal eight days. I mean, in eight days, you could go. 0-3 or 3-0, so these eight days hold a lot of influence on where we end up in, in May. We're going to uh, Ellis Island and uh, oh, Ground cool. Zero tomorrow. Oh, that's great. My brother that's Thomas, the uh, New York City Fireman, so we're going to his firehouse to eat. The way we look at this is we think this can be one of the great experiences in a kid's life because they're so emotionally invested in it, because they're doing it with 50 of their best friends in, in the world who will be 50 of their friends for the rest of their lives. The power of that is so great that if we take advantage of it properly and, and take advantage of the opportunities that, that playing a, a national schedule gives us, that, you know, the things that Notre Dame allows us to do, there's great power in that. One of the things that Coach Corrigan is constantly reminding our players is you know that you're part of a culture that you're always part of a community and that you got these multiple chances to define your own character but also learn from the character of others so the day after we defeated Hofstra when we went into Manhattan there was all those pieces coming together Captain Tom Byrne, uh, engine 315, ladder 135 in Jamaica, Queens. He's my older brother. Guys, this is my older brother Tom. He was the captain here. He just, just retired, but he did such a good job that you can tell them to cook for us again. Oh, I think it's great. I mean, uh, we don't get to see him that much. I mean, he's, I, I still live in New York. Uh, he lives, you know, in Indiana. And it's great to see him uh, when I get a chance. You know, it's like we were growing up again together. And I'm the older brother, and he's got to listen to me. Look out. Get your son Phil. Give him the spin. Give him the spin. Give him the spin. That's some efficiency right there. Very few things more personal than breaking bread. 
with someone. There's something about a great meal when you're sitting across from your friend and it's great conversation and the selflessness they cook for us while protecting that neighborhood from fires and that they found the time to do that. Just dig in. The guys from the house uh, did a great job and then we got it done. And you guys ate all the food. We were eating and they had to go on a call for a possible DOA. Possible DOA. Fourth floor. It's not something in the abstract when you're there and you watch these guys and you see their, their dedication and you see their commitment to what they're doing. I think it's pretty powerful. If you know New York City firemen, any firemen, are, they're very understated about what they do. It's just, it's just what they do. They don't have to talk about it. They don't have to promote themselves around it, which is a great ethic for our guys to see that, you know, you draw attention to yourself, not by, by what you say, by what you do. On behalf of the guys from Engine 315 and Ladder 125 and the officers, just a little something for you guys to take back. All right. Thank you. Thank Good luck to you this season, all right? Yeah. We're hanging in the locker room. All right, there you all go. Right. Thanks. Good. You Appreciate got it. it. That's awesome. There's not a separation for us from our development as a team and the development of our kids. I mean, it, it really is all in, in one and the same idea. Thanks for, for having us here. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. They gave me, a, uh, they gave me a, a patch from the, from the greatest show on earth. We'll hang this in our locker room since they've got our banner hanging. Uh, upstairs, we'll, we'll hang their banner in, in our locker room in South Bend, all right? So thanks again, guys, and, and uh, we'll see you out in the next season. We want a, our kids to have a sense of the great luck that they have, to have the opportunities that they have to be at one of the great universities in the world. And, and don't take for granted any of that and understand that there's people who are making it happen, whether it's the military people or the police or firemen who work on their behalf. All, all those things, you know, are, are things that our guys should have an appreciation for. Hey, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> I lead the team out before every game and play scout in the Brave. I think uh, to a lot of guys on the team it really means a lot. It's just a really unique way to get us ready and focused in. I take tremendous pride in, in playing the bagpipes and leading the team out. It's my little moment to shine where people, everybody's looking at me and uh, just I really enjoy that. Those bagpipes start playing, it really reminds you that it's game time at Notre Dame and you know there's nowhere else in the country that, that does those bagpipes and, and we're proud to be behind Colt when he goes out. Offense finally clicked, a lot of different guys contributed. There's not a few guys that are kind of making wow plays. There's six guys working together, and whoever scores is just the one that happens to be at the end of that play. That was perfect. That was perfect. Bullseye! Perfection on offense for Notre Dame. A 4-1 Notre Dame lead. This is where they're dangerous. They're most dangerous when they get down three or four. Quick stick score from Matthews. It's all tied up. Matthews trying to swing by his defender, and Matthews fires. Push it back up top. All right, and I want Marlott coming off here. Now it's 8-8. Marlott scores! Jim Marlott makes it 9-8. Noble back in transition, looking for numbers. Pioneers and Fighting Irish tied up, nine apiece. The third overtime period, Denver and Notre Dame in a thriller from Arlotta Stadium. Let's go, let's go. The boys gather round on both sides. Gatorade, water, which one? We were just concerned with our guys. It was so hot, and our guys were struggling with the heat a little bit. Obviously, you're in, you know, you're going into your third overtime. We were looking for, for some relief for some of our guys, and and uh, and we couldn't, you know, we couldn't find Mandy. Hey, Mandy, Mandy, come here. Where are you? But she was out on the field taking care of their goalie who had hurt his Achilles. Goalie Jamie Faust appears to be cramping. Oh. 
Initially going out, we thought he had cramped. And I know their athletic trainer, so she was on her own. So I just kind of went out and checked on him first and waited until she was able to get out there to make sure he was okay. Well, she was out there before I was out there. I didn't see him go down, so she kind of got the scoop, let me know what was going on, and, and it was really nice of her to be able to come out and help us out. We're just really lucky to have her. She didn't have to do that. It wouldn't be a bone of contention if she didn't do it, but it certainly adds a lot to the fact that she does and the way that she does it, kind of very selflessly. She's just always willing to help other people, no matter what jersey they have on. Priority goes to an injured kid. It doesn't matter if he's on our team or not. I've been taught that Notre Dame lacrosse works like that. The game part of it, who wins and who loses, doesn't necessarily matter. Loose ball, unsettled at the midline. Randall can go over, they're on side. That was a nice, savvy play by a number of guys just to pull off the ground ball at midfield. They kind of lost Sean in that transition and we got him the ball. Rogers fires, he scores! Mr. Sudden Victory does it again! And it seems like right now, Sean's the right guy to get the ball to at the end of the game. Coach did a great job of having that big picture in mind that we do have three games. The second, you know, Denver is over, started getting ready for Iowa State. We just went an extra quarter with these guys, right? That means we're 15 minutes behind getting ready for Ohio State. Put that in the books. We're back on to the next one. We got Ohio State on Wednesday. One, two, three. Irish. When the firehouse patch goes on the wall, that'll mean a lot to me. I think it really represents the blue collar mentality that is instilled in this program and the work ethic that we have. The firefighters definitely display that every day by putting their lives on the line. And I think there's a lot we can learn from that and use that as a, as a source of pride and a source of motivation. And welcome to Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium here in Columbus, Ohio, as the Ohio State Buckeyes take on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Jake Brems, one of our senior leaders on the team, one of the best defenders on the team. Unfortunately, he got hurt. I was disappointed when I hurt my knee, but the way it happens, and you know, the sun's gonna come up tomorrow, you gotta stay as positive as you can. It rubs off on other guys. So when I got hurt, it was take Jake's lead, and Jake contributes any way he can. I'm gonna do the same thing. Nick, a native Colombian, is gonna be speaking. Oh, right sorry, good to see you. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. I would have liked a return to Columbus, similar to, similar to Sean going back to Long Island, but was hurt in the first game. That's just the way these things work out, I guess. Pleasure. Fellas, introduce yourselves, please. I can't imagine how hard it was for him to uh, have his have his homecoming and then not be able to put on a jersey. But he's always looking for a way to help out the team, whether it be on the field or off the field. And on Wednesday, it just happened to be that the best thing he could do for us was to give us that, that speech. I decided to say something because we look flat. And the last time we came out flat, we, we kind of blew the game against Penn State. Hey, what did we say after Penn State? We said we were going to hold ourselves accountable. That's the same form up I saw at Penn State. We wear Irish on our chest. That means something. You've earned that. You don't get another chance to go out there and play Ohio State. I wish I could be out there playing Ohio State, but I don't get the chance to. So the second I see one of you cut a corner, yeah, I'm gonna say something about it. I wanna see us fired up to take it to these guys. This is our game. You know what? It's not a stretch to say that he did for us in his hometown what Sean did for us in his hometown. He, he found a way that he could contribute to us being successful, and he did it. As it here gets tripped up there, and there's a shot and a goal, and the Irish get on the board first and lead this one one to nothing. The short week of preparation, the fact that we're on the road, and the fact that they needed a win, I think all added up to that that was going to be a difficult game. Timeout. Jake Brems, I would say, is the epitome of kind of like the selfless Notre Dame lacrosse player. He would be the guy out on the field who we'd be drenching with towels and waiting to hand water bottles to and shutting down their best attackmen. And instead, he's on the sidelines grabbing water towels, waiting to douse off you know, a sophomore who's probably in his place. Our managers were busy with water. Uh, Mandy's you know, treating guys, making sure they're getting hydrated. So somebody had to get the towel. So it's, it's, you know, that's, the, that's the job they needed to get done. So I was going to do it. I take pride in it because as Coach always says, you know, it's the job that needs to get done. I can't expect somebody else to do it. 
um, those guys are working their butts off out there. I'm standing on the sideline. You know, I want I'm, I want to help the team win. And if that means I have to get bring them towels every time we have a timeout, that means I bring them towels every time there's a timeout. They're the things that, that teams and programs are made of. Games are made of players making plays that they've worked on. You certainly have to have that to be successful. But there's also the, the collective aspect of the whole thing. As a college coach, as an educator, you got to appreciate and value those things that, that you think are, are the enduring things that guys are going to take away from the experience of having played for Notre Dame. There's nothing more important in, in what we do. That is a great job, bouncing back off Sunday, coming back today, now it doesn't end, right? It doesn't end, we're going to get tomorrow off. Okay, we're gonna recharge our batteries and get ready to be at our best against Saturday. But hey, I'm tremendously proud of the effort we put out there today. People spend a lot of time in here and obviously, naturally, people see what's on the walls. I think people buy into that. There's certain things that go up on these walls that carry a lot of meaning. We don't just throw anything up here. We have a flag in here from Steve Claggett who played here. He's a Navy SEAL and he sent the flag with a mission patch and map of where he served in Afghanistan. Then we have number 40 here which is for Mike Sennett. This year I am number 40. Originally number 40 was Mike Sennett. He was an alumni class of 91 from the team. He passed away unfortunately and in his honor they have made a tradition to make a senior every year number 40. Uh, he was somebody who was a captain of the team and was very well respected for his dedication, his hard work, a lot of the intangible things that, that you talk about with being on a sports team. I'm very humbled by the fact that my teammates would choose me to wear that number and, and for the things that it stands for, having me wear that on game days. Hey man, what's up? Good, good, good. You part of the lacrosse team? Yes. What's up, dude? I'm Adam. Adam, Andrew. Andrew, nice to meet you, nice man. Nice to meet you. You speaking to us today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really good to meet you. Yeah. Absolutely. My name's Adam Woodner. I'm from the uh, Wounded Warrior Project, and I'm here today with the Notre Dame lacrosse team, so hopefully I get to kind of talk to them a little bit about some of their values and a little bit about our values and how they're parallel. I was the first one to hear Andrew because I have so much respect for the things that they go through and the things that they're willing to sacrifice for us. We talk about sacrifice on this team, and, and while we do make sacrifices and while we take pride in that, the type of sacrifice that they're willing to make every day, our sacrifices pale in comparison to those. And so, you know, just to be there and give thanks to what they do and let them know that, although we probably don't thank them enough, that we do think about them is something that to me is very important. I come from a strong military traditional family. I grew up listening to words like courage, service, commitment, duty, and honor. And I didn't really know what they meant. When it's all over and done with, the only reason that you're there is for the person on your right and the person on your left. Both myself and my teammates could really relate to what he was saying and understanding how important you know, those around you are and how out of all the experiences he had, out of all the terrible things that he had to go through, he boiled it down to one thing and that was I wanted to make sure that I had the person to my left's back, the person to my right's back, and I trusted that they had mine. Thank you very much. I'm not going to compare us to the things that Adam has gone through, but I got to say, when you listen to his story, the thing he talks about, those big words that his, you know, of service and commitment and all those things, all things that we believe in too, right? But I thought the interesting thing was it all boiled down to one thing for him, didn't it? Who's on your left and who's on your right? It all boiled down to that. If you fall, I'll pick you up. We're playing for each other. We're playing for what we believe in, for what we work hard, so hard for, but mostly we're playing for each other. It's that simple. Let's go. The guy to your left and the guy to your right. That's what you see in that picture. You see guys together worried about you know, those guys, not themselves. It's, it's a beautiful painting, and uh, I think it shows a lot about what our team's about. And they are faceless, which is something we're not worried about individual stats and statistics. Um, we'll worry about our team. Call me, you know me. I've been Revel New was in town, and one of the few things we have in our locker room, you know, hanging is a is a painting that he did, a unique personification of what the Fighting Irish means. I think he captured the essence of 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 what Notre Dame's about, and we hope the the essence of what our team is about, and that is, if you are successful, 
it's as much because of the people who supported you as it is about your own efforts. And I, I think he captured all of that in a painting that we really take to heart. This is a little bit of swagger. And this is strength, both physical and mental. I mean, the, uh, you know, Notre Dame lacrosse is not just on Sundays out on the field. When I was recruited, I always said, you know, I'm, I'm not Catholic and I'm not Irish. But uh, to me, it's not an ethnicity, it's an ethic. And I feel like I've got that, and to a large degree, because of coach. Hey, all day long. All day long. <laughs> Step in and rip it. So we jumped out to a 6-1 lead. They continued to fight back to the point where it was a one-goal game. Here comes DiPolari. He's going to take the shot himself. Gets it in the upper corner past Kemp. Big goal there for the Scarlet Knights as they bring the lead back to one. And we simply had to rely on the person to our left and the person to our right. Hey, expect pressure right now. Expect pressure on the clear. One, two, three. You know, it would have been easy to make excuses the three games in one week. It would have been a tough one to lose, especially after a couple big wins. You know, maybe we took our foot off the gas a little bit there in the second and third quarter, but uh, you know, we came back strong. <laughs> it's baller. I think we found out that we have a lot of composure in, in tough games, one goal games. It's good to know that guys want to make plays late in games and they aren't afraid to make plays when the game's on the line. We did a great job of getting through this week, all right, of getting these three games in eight days, you know, on the whole, we did a good job. I think what we learned in, in the last eight days or, or the three games is that there's no quit in this team and we're willing to just keep fighting. So I think that's going to help us in the long run. We're going to put the patch right up on the wall, right above the thermostat down there. So it'll be, you know, right, right near the, the, the painting of revs and the, and the flag and all that stuff will be right there. You good, Jer? I think you should do the honors to your brother's house. I'll look at it every day and it'll remind me of family. It'll remind me of the personalities of the, of the guys that we've met a few weeks ago. And it'll remind me of, of the sense of sacrifice and the sense of teamwork and selflessness that a great firehouse needs and a great team needs.